Hi everybody, welcome to another Friday Technique video. I'm JL Holdsworth, we're here at the Spot Athletics. Uh, Zach Gallman, one of my guys, is gonna help us out today. We're gonna go over handoff technique in the bench press. Uh, it seems fairly basic, hey bro, give me a handoff, but uh, one of our interns uh, came in and uh, they've been lifting for several years, really messed this up, and luckily it wasn't with me, because I told him if he'd have done it to me, I'd have punched him in the face. Uh, and I think that if you're lifting out and you're doing five, six, seven hundred pounds, if someone messes that up and it drops on you, it could kill you. So that warrants getting punched in the face. Um, I don't take handing off lightly. It's not just like, hey, anybody can do it for me. I only let people who I trust and who I know has spent the time in and know how to hand off do it. You should also. If you don't know how to do this, Watch this video, go over with your training partner so that everybody's on the same page. Because the, the handoff makes a big difference between making a PR and missing a PR. So the first thing I'll go off, what is my job as a handoff person? One, first thing is to make sure that the right amount of weight is on the bench. So there's zero plates on this side, zero plates on this side, we're even, we're ready to go. Now obviously we don't have plates on there so that you guys can see what's going on a little better. but. It's serious, as, as the handoff person, your job is to count the plates, make sure everything's even and ready to go for your person. They should only have to worry about pushing the weight. They shouldn't have to worry about getting a misloaded bar. Next, as we approach the bar, we wanna make sure that it's not back all the way to the back of the J-hooks. That creates longer for you to lift off. The further that bar gets away from your body and the further it gets away from his body, the harder it is to hand off. So we want to put that up where it needs to be. We want to make sure that the bar is not off center. We want to make sure that bar is centered for our lifter. Now, everybody kind of depending where they're set up, might move it just a touch, or if they communicate over this way a little bit, then you can move it over a little bit for them, get it in place. So again, all they have to do is worry about what they're doing in the bench press, not setting everything up. That's my job, is to make his job easier. Um, Next, what we're gonna do is as he sets up, it depends if you're geared or if you're raw, but I'm a big fan. When I get the bar up to here, I step back because some guys really wanna come back and they don't wanna put their face in your crotch. So I hold the bar in place so that when he's going, he doesn't push that bar back away and it moves back on him. So I keep that in place. Now once he's in where he needs to be and he's set and then I step up. Now, you should communicate this before you hand off and talk about how you're gonna do it. I already know Zach's gonna go one, two breath, I'm gonna lift off. So, we know beforehand, and you should know what your training partner, if you're lifting someone new off, ask them how they do it. I prefer one, two breath, and then obviously as take the air, then we're gonna lift off. Some people prefer one, two, three go, you know, some people don't like to say anything and go, you have to know your training partners, what they like, so that you can give them the best handoff possible. Now next, as I grab the bar, a lot of people get an over-under because they're like, oh, this is heavy. The problem is, is when they get the over-under, a lot of times they end up windmilling the bar, okay? So I'm a big proponent of only ever lifting off double over so that I don't end up windmilling the bar to them. With a heavy weight, a max weight, if I push that a half inch too far, that's a miss, okay? It makes a big difference. I think a lot of people take the handoff not very serious. That gets you punched in the face in our place, okay? So if you come to the Spot Athletics, take it serious because you'll be serious when you're knocked out. So next, make sure you get up on the bar. See people stand back here. You're not gonna give them anything with a front raise, okay? You can't front raise 400 pounds, all right? So you wanna make sure you're all the way up on them. The other thing is make sure that your person is in good position. So, you know, he might be jacked up, you know, Zach's never benched 45 pounds before, so he's all jacked up, he's in his head. So now, when I get here, I realize we've got a really, really long hand up. So I'm like, Zach, you gotta come back a little bit. So then he gets set up. Now, that right there, because I'm doing my job, could have been a, a, a miss to a make, because now I can give him better hand off, now he doesn't have to travel the bar as far and he can get his lats locked in. So he's set up where he needs to be. <clears throat> We're in position, we're nice tight on the bar. He gives me his count. One, two. We lift off, it's like a crane. <clears throat> he's locked in, we very gently let go of the bar. 
He's locked in, he starts the bench. Go ahead, rack it. So, one of the uh, several things that I see that are huge, taking too much off the bar or not taking enough. Lifting off is a skill, okay? There's a reason that guys are going for world records, they only trust certain people to lift them off. It is a skill, it takes time. So even though you think that it's not cool to lift off 135 for your buddy, all you're doing is getting the rhythm, getting the feel for those 485s, 585s, those big benches that are gonna come. So lifting off, I believe, isn't for him at the lighter weights, it's so that as a team, we can create the best product and give him the best chance of hitting big numbers. So, when he takes the bar and he goes to lift off, how do you know too much? Well, an easy way to know too much is if on his count I pull it up and it pulls him up. Now I know, now he's gotta step back down. Can't pull him out, his lats have to stay locked, so you gotta let him guide it. I think of the lift off person as a crane, lifting off just enough so that they can get it in position easily, then slowly releasing the weight of their hand. With the slowly releasing, the other thing is, maybe you give a good lift off, the person stays locked in, you're, as soon as you clear the rack, you dump it on them. With a lot of weight, what happens if you dump it right here, they're gonna go like this, and they're gonna get that. It's, a, it's really hard when someone dumps the bar on you. Now, maybe even if you do get into position, just dropping it, that's not good either. You wanna slowly release, because even if you're taking 100 pounds off in your lift off, because they're not gonna need you, know, you to lift 700 pounds, they're gonna need 100 or 200 or 300, whatever, however much benching you're doing. So you wanna take it off so it's easy for them to get it out, but don't pull them out of being tight. And make sure, it's just a nice, you let them control it. You're like, a, you're like here, and they get it in their position, you release it. See, a lot of guys sometimes wanna force them to where they think they should be. So they push them here, well you're just disaster or they stop here. You're a crane, that guy will get it to where he needs to be and you release. Don't push him or keep him in a spot. Let him get it where he needs to be, be the crane for him. <clears throat> now, I know we're talking about lift offs, but just as a cautionary tale, please no bro spotting, okay? When you're on the bar, hands are on the bar, go ahead. This is bro spotting. So you're here, you're here, he starts learning, you still got it. Oh yeah, it's all you, it's all you, it's all you. Well no, your hands are on the bar for the whole lift, it's not all you. No bro spotting, okay? The person benching should set. When they set, you're releasing slowly so that the bar is really all them and it's a good lift, okay? And so, make sure too, obviously we're here on this rack bench, so you know it's obviously set up for, for me to be able to hand off. But we do a lot in our power racks, uh, a lot of benching in our power racks. So there, there's several options, depending on what kind of benches you have. Of course, you don't all have EliteFTS.com benches because they are the best. Um, what works really well with our Elite benches is we take uh, the mats that we use for the box squats, which are stall mats that we've cut up. We just put three of those on the front side of the frame. Now, it creates a nice big platform. It actually gets me even closer than where I'm at here. When I'm lifting off on those, I don't have this crossbar, my crotch is really just right over his face. It's okay, man, it's not gay to have your crotch over another man's face if you're bench pressing. If you're not bench pressing, it's another story. Get in there, doesn't matter. Girl, guy, look, we're going for big weights. All that other shit doesn't matter, all right? We wear a singlet, that isn't exactly the most manly thing in the world. Get in there, give the best handoff you can. So mats, you can use boxes. Uh, we have some, like uh, one of the benches I have, it works better like on incline, because that's a big one I see handoff. Guys are handing off inclines, they're way down here, they're handing off, it, it's, they, there's no way they can get leverage. So we made uh, eight inch boxes to get us up so that when we're in an incline handoff, that we're in a good position to shrug it off, not like a, you know, just a top of a front raise. So make sure guys, put yourself in good position for handoffs. Make sure that you know what your training partner is gonna do. Uh, I have a, one of my training partners, he doesn't say anything. He just gets tight, pulls up and goes. Okay, so know what your training partner, communicate between each other before the lift starts. You know, be in good position, communicate with your training partner. Make sure you're not dropping it on them, you're a crane. And then lastly, make sure that as the, your, that liftoff guy, you're staying with him and finishing. 
One of the things I really hate to see, you see a good, and, and you don't see this at meets, but you see this in gyms. You see a good lift off, then a hot chick walks by, and they're like this, and the guy's down there about to die, okay? Make sure, this is your job. Make sure you stay in position for your job. Make sure as a lift off guy, you get that bar back into the rack. So when the lift is finished, and he's here, and he pauses at the top just like he should, then we help him slide back in so it doesn't bounce out on him, okay? Your job isn't finished until the bar is racked as the liftoff person, okay? So make sure we take this serious. This was a, a big thing uh, for one of my interns the other day. Um, he lifted off uh, one of my girls, and uh, I told her she should have punched him in the face, but, you know, she didn't want to. But this is serious, guys. So take it serious. Take these points and take. Go back to your training partners. Make sure you guys are on the same page. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you guys have any questions, go to spotathletics.com or shoot me an email, jl to spotathletics.com. Uh, check out our Twitter and our Facebook. Uh, have a good weekend, everybody.